Hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, and uh, a new video series that I'm planning on doing. This is the first one. Um, and car reviews, basically. Uh, so I'm going to start off with one of um, my favourite cars in iRacing, um, which is the Ferrari GTE. Uh, all around brilliant car, but we'll go into more details and different things as we go. Um, but yeah, uh, I do love this car, so I thought it was a good first choice. Um, if this goes well, I've got some video editing to do and stuff like that. I'll do a series on all the cars that I've got in iRacing uh, with these metrics that I've kind of come up with. Hopefully you guys can relate and find some benefit of this. Um, I kind of wish I had this at the start. Um, kind of bought some of the wrong cars in certain points. <coughs> for my for my liking. Um, so it's kind of what led me to going along and creating this. Um, so we've jumped in the Ferrari. Um, recorded some laps around uh, Silverstone, which I'll just play on the overlay. And then, uh, yeah, we'll talk about the car a bit more. So, um, I mean, obviously, you know, we'll start off with the looks. And, I mean, it looks like a Ferrari, right? I mean, they've done a pretty good job here. I like the rear diffuser, um, the lights at the front. I mean, it's a good-looking car, right? Um... So I can definitely say in the looks department they've smashed that and uh, give that uh, an excellent rating for sure. Um, they've done really well there. Um, the high racing team. Um, rear diffuser, back, front. I mean, it's just a good looking car. At the end of the day, it's a Ferrari. I mean, what else do you expect? You know? Um... Yeah, uh, quite impressive, uh, to say the least. Um, sounds the part two. Um, next, we're going to get on to the brakes. Now, cold, they're, uh, they're a bit twitchy on the brakes, uh, for sure. Um, but... Considering this is a GTE car and it's one of the more powerful, faster cars in the um, in the series or, or in the, you know in the, the available options in iRacing, it's um, surprisingly really good. Um, general all round, it's really good for newcomers who uh, you know branching out of you know completed their MX5 bits, got want to get into a bigger, faster car. Um, when I look back on it. Um, this is definitely the second car I should have got. So after I finished the MX-5, I should have jumped into this. And I didn't. I went for GT3s. I've got the AMG next. was my first one. First purchase. But I should have got the Ferrari. Um, and kind of reasons why I thought about doing this series for the channel was, you know, if I'd have known, um, I maybe would have gone for the Ferrari instead. Obviously it's a GTE, so it's for the GTA class races and IMSA and so on and so forth. Um, but brake wise, um, they're actually really good on this. Uh, you don't get a ton of locking up. Obviously you can see here we're doing a few laps around Silverstone. Um, not pushing a ton hard, but uh, you, you know, she's not locking up. Um, you know, pretty well balanced uh, under braking. Um, and the trail braking profile on this is pretty good as well. So, um, you know, it doesn't get too snappy under the brakes, um, for sure. So, yeah, brakes, definitely excellent. Um, next, uh, handling-wise, um, I mean, handling on this car, um, for me, is super impressive. The thing handles like it's on rails. Um, the grip level is unreal. Um, I have been so impressed with the level of grip this car has. Uh, 
my first race in it was around um, Watkins Glen, which I, you know, I love that track too. Um, and I, there's a another video that I did um, of that race, and I'm literally grinning ear from ear as I'm throwing it around the corners because it just sticks. You get it right, it just sticks. Uh, the grip level is um, is unreal and uh, one of the best features of this car um, so definitely a, an excellent on the old grip side of things um, for sure um, I mean listen to it listen to that sound the old, the old uh, wastegate whistle um, let go. I mean, it, it's also one of the better sounding cars, if I'm honest, um, for sure. Uh, for me, um, it, it just sounds brilliant. I, I love it. I love this car. I love driving it. Um, I wish I, personally, I was a bit of a better driver. I think I could do a lot more with it. But uh, yeah, it's a lovely car to drive um, from that perspective. Um, I mean, the throttle response as well is pretty good. Um, some cars in you know, iRacing can be a bit twitchy, especially coming out of the corners, about how aggressive you can be on the acceleration, especially when you look at some of the Formula cars. Um, like the Formula 2 or the F1 car and stuff. If you, if you just give it just that fraction too much acceleration, it will spin. Uh, not the case with the Ferrari. Um, the Ferrari is, uh, it, you know, uh, it is a very forgiving car uh, for the newcomers to the faster racing series. Um, as he says, he spins it. Lovely. Um, it is definitely one of the Ferrari, uh, the easier ones. So from a throttle side of things, she's pretty good. Um, and then it jumps us straight into like the ease of drive. It is so easy to get into this car and drive it and learn it and um, you know, become re relatively quick with it. Obviously, like anything in iRacing, seat time is everything to get better. Um, but it's a very easy car to drive for sure. Um, quite impressed with how easy it is to drive, um, to pick up and learn and understand the balance of the car in different situations. Um, it's as it, it's a very forgiving car too to drive. It makes it so much easier um, to learn those aspects. Um, you know, you know things like knowing when to trail brake, when not to, when to, um, you know, the the limits of the grip, um, acceleration, the braking. You know, it's relatively easy to pick those up. Um, and it doesn't seem to be as on the edge. Um, so from an ease to drive perspective, get in and go, um, you know, as well as your ramp up time, things like that. Um, this car is one of the better ones uh, for sure. So I've rated those as good um, in my little uh, thing, um, my rating scheme. I think they're both, you know, really good, really good, easy to drive really good ramp up time you, know, you can get in this car um, on the right track after a few laps and be relatively competitive um, obviously the one thing that I found as well as I've played around with other cars is there is an immersion aspect I mean let's be fair that's why we're um, doing sim racing um, we're you know, we want to do sim racing because we want to be immersed in that kind of experience. Um, if it was, you know, my reason for doing doing starting sim racing was I'm a petrol head. I love doing a track day. We got into lockdown. Um, can't do track days. Um, can't take my car on track at the moment. Um, and so I got into sim racing and I've loved every moment of it. Um, there is a difference between, you know, real world, of course, and, and, and any sim. And with iRacing, even the cars themselves give you a different immersive experience 
you find that um, like I, I, there's, I've done a review of the McLaren F1 again another video that I did uh, one of my earlier ones and I was you know driving that car it was like it's so immersive like you really felt like he was doing it uh, came off like sweating um, and a big grin on my face the entire time um, and so with the with the McLaren um, that was just like its immersion was excellent um, with this um, it is still very good it's not quite the McLaren McLaren is still by far the most immersive car I've driven on iRacing um, with my setup and, and so on um, but the Ferrari is very good um, you know especially through uh, you know kind of tight weavy bends you know that follow one after another the grip level um, how it feels like it's going around corners on rails and you're you know you're proper leaning into it um, so from that aspect it is one of the better cars for sure um, so from an immersion perspective it's definitely good It's obviously a you know quite a quick car too, right? I mean, it is a GTE car. Um, it is as fast, if not faster, than some of the others um, in certain aspects. Um, you can get in this and be competitive against any other GTE class car. Um, you're just as quick as them, if not quicker. Um, Acceleration is pretty good on it. Um, it is a quick motor. Um, top speed wise again you know not the fastest obviously your formula cars are always going to be your fastest cars uh, but it is still a you know a quick car uh, very enjoyable car um, to drive um, and so for its top speed I've given it excellent because it is still you know it is a GTE car other than your formulas and your LMPs um, it is one of the fastest cars in the game um, for sure so definitely uh, an excellent on the old top speed side of things. So that kind of gets us into the final pieces with this in you know, a total rating, you know, overall thing. I mean, this is this Ferrari is probably my favourite car in the game right now. Uh, I do enjoy driving other cars. You know, there's different things. I love the Skip Barber. Uh, I do like the uh, MX-5 still, you know, great in certain conditions, certain tracks. It's just an awesome, you know, good fun to drive. Um, but all in all, the Ferrari GTE for me is still the, um, the better car um, and my favourite. Um, which is why I started with this series, with this video. Um, you know with the Ferrari because I felt it was the easiest one for me to talk to because I do like it so much um, uh, I, I do plan on doing a lot more racing with this car for sure uh, on the channel as a whole um, and so yeah so from a you know from a total rating perspective um, it just pips it into the excellent bracket for me um, some may feel different Ain't no one will argue that it is not a, it's not a bad car it is a very good all-round car um, well worth the purchase I would say um, and I'm sure others would agree that it is you know uh, a good car to to dabble in um, but I think you'll, you'll you will see some people that will argue that it's a good Car, not an excellent one um, there are certain aspects that make other cars stand out more than the Ferrari but for me yeah not so much I loved it uh, that first race at Watkins Glen in this thing was brilliant so much fun um, it, and, and therefore it just yeah it just pips it I enjoy it every time I'm driving this car no matter how well I'm doing whether I'm first or last or in the middle, I enjoy every corner, every lap, uh, driving it, and um, I definitely think it's well worth the purchase. I'm a bit disappointed that I took so long to get it, because I've only relatively recently bought the car. Um, so 
so yeah so all in all uh, definitely excellent definitely worth the purchase for me uh, one of the better uh, bits of money that I've spent in oil racing um, for sure um, trying to keep these videos uh, to 15 minutes and we're coming up on that it's just 15 minutes of review uh, of the motor <laughs> so yeah there you go excellent um, I'm trying to put the graphics on the screen so that you can see them uh, as I've rated them um, hopefully you guys have liked the series or you know like the idea behind this series of videos um, like I said I'm going to try and keep them to 15 minutes uh, this one might be a little bit longer because um, obviously I'm explaining it a little bit more but yeah so new series what do you think other metrics you'd like us to talk about um, you know put it in the comments below um, before I start doing the other videos on the other cars um, I'm gonna go through every single car I've got um, do some laps do some practice and uh, you know kind of give you these metrics of how I'm rating the cars um, but I'm open to you know other points so if you feel that there's a point I'm missing or something you would like to know more about on the cars uh, put it in the comments below and I'll make sure it captures it and uh, I get it in uh, for you guys um, so yeah anyway as always uh, I hope you found it useful uh, if you did hit that like um, and subscribe button help support the channel um, otherwise I'll catch you in the next one um, yeah thanks again guys uh, be safe be lucky